It's getting harder to ignore the fact that we're heading into a new era of climate crisis. In the last year, cities worldwide have been hit with catastrophic and previously unseen weather events. Fires, floods, droughts, heat waves and extreme storms have slammed cities from China to the United States. These extreme storms and the climate crisis, crisis are here. And climatologists believe it's only going to get worse. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, a team of experts assembled by the United Nations, said that extreme weather events will increase in frequency and intensity in the future. It is indisputable that human activities are causing climate change and making extreme weather events more frequent and severe. Hong Kong isn't immune to the impacts of climate change. The coastal city of seven and a half million people is no stranger to being battered by typhoons. However, the IPCC reports that Hong Kong will be struck by a super typhoon on average every single year as early as 2050 if global warming exceeds two degrees Celsius. The thing is, that number two degrees Celsius isn't as far away as you might think. Even if nations worldwide dramatically cut their carbon emissions today, the world would still warm by as much as 1.5 degrees Celsius within the next 20 years. That puts a mere half degree Celsius between the Hong Kong we all see today and a far different future. This is what Hong Kong's financial district could look like in the year 2100 if sea levels rise by two to three metres as warned by the IPCC. To see what this could look like, you don't need to look much further than 2018, when a super typhoon called Mankut tore through the city, causing more than half a billion US dollars in losses. For Jenna DeWitt, the memories of this storm continue to sting. That moment is in my head all the time, so it is scary. DeWitt has lived in Hong Kong for 20 years, much of it at this laid-back seaside village of Sheko. But in 2018, as Mankut bore down on the city, her beachfront home put her in the path of danger. That moment is kind of like a dream, you know? Is it, is it real? Uh, when the waves come, is it, they develop, right? From the smallest getting higher and then higher and higher. Then the last path when I'm staying is the wave is just quite high and uh, it's just over my, my kitchen. So that's, that's when they broke my window and uh, the water is coming in. It must have been a terrifying experience having you know, this wall of water come at you. Yeah, it is. It is scary. That's the, the part of scary. The night before, we put the sun back in the front of the house that time and also a bit inside. But when the water level come, when the uh, big wave is coming in and crashed to our house, we got a chunk of the uh, wood that actually hit this window. So we have a crack, all this window is cracked, and then the water is starting coming in and the water level also is getting higher. Oh wow, so the water level was already up it's, here, the yes. debris has gone through the window and all the water starts coming yeah. in. Yeah. Were you afraid that something like this could happen again? Yeah, I think every time I just stand in the kitchen and I saw the you know current and wave coming up, still just far away from my kitchen actually, but just make me yeah scary. I'm still got that traumatic and that's that thing. And is is that some of the reason why you left Sheko? I think because that you know the typhoon is always keep me traumatic and um, you know it's always in behind my back. Like if anything happened again and. I got a younger kid and I'm just like, you know, this place is not really safe and I decide to move away, yeah. It's easy to see why coastal villages like this one would be affected by climate change. But what about the rest of Hong Kong? And many people think um, Hong Kong will be fine because it's hilly, but actually we have a lot clustered uh, along the coast. And so Hong Kong is actually very vulnerable. CT Lo is an expert in climate resilience planning at China Water Risk here in Hong Kong. He says sea level rise poses a serious threat to some of Hong Kong's most populous areas. So this means that with tides, Hong Kong must protect itself up to at least 5 to 6 metres by 2100. 
So this is permanent submission. At these levels, the water, the, the waterfront in central will be flooded. IFC, Mandarin Oriental, and even HSBC head office will also be underwater. So basically, pretty much everything that we can see in terms of land. Yes, yes, yes. Lower-lying land. So yeah. the Queen's Road Central will basically be the new coastline in Hong Kong Island. In April 2022, Hong Kong identified 26 areas at risk of being impacted by climate change and extreme weather. The Civil Engineering and Development Department proposed a range of solutions, including building wave walls and flood barriers. For now, the Hong Kong government believes it has a handle on flooding risks. Since 1995, the Drainage Services Department has expanded the city's stormwater system to, today, span 21 kilometres of underground tunnels. Areas like Sham Shui Po and Lai Chi Kok used to have issues with flooding. That was until they built tunnels like this one. In 1995, there were 90 so-called flooding black spots in Hong Kong. Today, there are only four. The DSD declined to discuss its plans to address the growing impacts of climate change, but they shared the following statement. The DSD is committed to enhancing the quality of flood protection work in Hong Kong. To this end, we design and build the city's drainage system in accordance with international standards to ensure adequate flood protection capabilities. Hong Kong is one of the wettest cities in Asia and it relies on tunnels like this one to ensure that it stays dry during the wet season. Now, as typhoons get stronger and as the city starts to feel the effects of climate change, it's going to be relying more on tunnels like this to ensure that the city doesn't flood. Projects like this carry a hefty price tag. The DSD's 10.5 kilometre long West Drainage Tunnel costs 3.4 billion Hong Kong dollars, or some 436 million US dollars to build. Experts say even with measures like the DSD's new drainage system, Hong Kong fails to measure up to its regional neighbours in regards to climate change readiness. So in the report that you released in 2020, where does Hong Kong actually sit um, compared to other cities around the world? So the index that we created, it benchmarks 20 APAC cities against different physical course of risk, including locked in sea level rise, subsidence, storm surge, and also government adaptation action. And the, the index that looks at about three meters of sea level rise that we could actually see by 2100. In that, Hong Kong ranks number 16 out of 20, so it's in the bottom quartile. And the ones at the top are Singapore, Auckland, even Jakarta is there. And that's because Jakarta, uh, even though it is very risky because of the subsidence risks, it still has some plans in place and it's disclosing these plans. But I think we have a really good opportunity here uh, to really think about our future because Hong Kong is not just going to face sea level rise, it's also going to face much higher temperatures and flash floods and much higher typhoon wind speeds, etc. So there's a lot that we have to prepare for. But we have this opportunity to really reimagine Hong Kong. Are you worried? Are you worried about the risk of climate change and, and what Hong Kong will face in the future? Yes, of course, we're all worried about it because the risks are just continuously rising and the numbers that keep coming out just look worse every single year. So we need to plan and think about how we will protect all of that. Because quite often people talk about polar bears and penguins, but it's us, all of us, our houses, our real estate, our lives that are going to be affected. 